Hello, it's Dr. Shelley, and you've graduated, and you've had that big old cake with the stethoscope on it, and you've walked down that aisle and gathered your diploma, and you are done with nursing school, done with that stupid HESI or that ATI exit exam, and you are ready. In fact, you're so over it, you're ready to go on vacation, but you know I told you don't, because that's the number one error that brand new graduates make. They go on vacation instead of taking the NCLEX within 12 weeks of graduation. But since you did accidentally happen to find a video of mine that said this, now you're like, fuck, let me get down to you're like studying for this test. There's that. So let me tell you what your next mistake will be. And I don't think you're gonna do it because I'm here to prevent it. Your next mistake is to plan to take a test without knowing what the test plan is. We all know those instructors who gave you a test date, but no study guide. Study everything. Make sure you look at the book. Make sure you remember the notes. You pull the clinical uh, experience into your answers. Bitch, what? Oh, come on now. So my point is only this. I am here to help you prepare to study for this test by giving you the test plan. It is your study guide, because trust and believe, if you fail this test, your CPR report, which is the report you're going to get after you fail, is going to have all of these categories on it and how much you sucked in it. Yeah, so let's get started. I'm Dr. Shelley. This is HETV. I am from Shelley's Nursing Review, and we're going to cover this test plan. So when you know the plan, you plan to know. All right, so here we go. The first part of the NCSBN, National Council State Board of Nursing, NGN, Next Generation NCLEX Test Plan that came out in 2023 and will go all the way to 2026. The first part is management of care. Now, just to give you backdrop, this test is anywhere from 85 questions to 150 questions. It is also going to throw out 15 of those questions, just pilot questions, you know. And you have up to five hours to take the test. Now, if you run out of time, what we have learned since this test has come out is it's okay. You probably still passed if you followed my rules that I have for mastering one subject at a time. Uh, we have lots of students who actually do pass and ran out of time, but they knew their stuff. And so how are you gonna fail them? They got the, the answers right. They just ran out of time, okay? All right, so we have that now. So when we look at the test plan, we look at some major categories and they're kind of broken up into ranges of percents. To be exact, just to give you an idea of what I mean, management of care is anywhere from 18 to 22%. Well, I rounded off and said 20% of your test is gonna be that management of care. And we want you to know exactly what you gotta know about management of care, right? And so what we tell you is that with management of care, you have to know prioritization, delegation, ethical legal, DNR, advanced directives. You absolutely have to know about workplace violence and um, uh, positive communication, therapeutic communication. You have to know, for example, consent forms. You have to know the difference between hospice and palliative care. You have to know the difference between assertive communication and aggressive communication. You kinda gotta understand your S-bar. I mean, you know, you get it. So when you look at this pink packet and that's just how i roll i roll with pink packets you have a full list of everything that this test is going to want you to know so you can see it's alphabetized you see chain of command delegation you see your ethics 
you see some of the Good Samaritan issues. You can see your workplace violence, your negligence, your malpractice, your quality improvement. All of this is management of care. So we do cover you. I wouldn't worry so much about it. Even if you don't buy anything pink from me, which you don't have to, we have a video playlist which has 500 plus videos in it for free. I put my entire nursing school on YouTube for free. And one of those playlists is called Management of Care. When you click on the playlist, you get 10, 15 videos all on Management of Care. So there's no way for you to mess this up. And after all, it is 20% of your test. And you know, when it comes to prioritization, it's who you see first. I mean, you know, you get it, right? All right, so let's move on because we said that that was 20%. The next category is safety and infectious diseases. Well, you know you had to know what kind of PPE to put on, what kind to take off. You had to know the different precautions in terms of safety issues, seizure precautions, falls precautions, um, dysphagia precautions, ICP precautions, neutropenia precautions, bleeding precautions, you had to know that. You had to know the different modes of transmission, the, the contact, the droplet, the airborne, the standard, all of those are in this section and it's about 15%. And then just throw in some stuff about restraints for good measure and you covered this category, okay? Now the next category, I find that sometimes students do not that great in, it's health promotion and maintenance. And health promotion and maintenance is your maternity, your pediatrics, your growth and development, your older adult or geriatrics, your cancer screenings, vaccines, those sorts of things. This health promotion and maintenance my goodness, is it important because you probably know if you took the test and failed that they're not kidding. They got maternity on this test. You know that they had their share of pediatrics on this test. You know that with growth and development, you got to know what age to, that a baby needs to be sitting up by. You got to know when do they control their head. You've got to know how much they should be eating. You've got to know what they should weigh by a year old. You've got to know what the average pulse rate is for that kid. You've also got to know the diseases in pediatrics, you know, pyloric stenosis and asthma and meningitis and cleft lip and palate and trisomy 21 and your your croup oh! <laughs> so you know you've got to know those okay but don't worry we have a playlist a free playlist with all of that in it this is about 10 percent of your test it's not one of the number one areas of failure, but it is sometimes a real pain in your ass when they really keep giving you maternity questions. So, you know, here in Shelly's Nursing Review, we have this thing called a three-day boot camp, which I'll talk about later. And we do tell you the most common things on the test for maternity and pediatrics. I mean, we just, you know, give you the list of, of the different things on any test, right? Because we never know exactly what's on the test. That doesn't happen. But we know, I have a PhD, keep that in mind. We know what the test is looking for, okay? All right, the next thing on the menu of your NGN NCLEX test plan is psych. Mm, yeah, you gotta know all about cray cray. And believe it or not, students do not know about cray cray. In fact, if you're anything like me, and most of you are, you got almost no clinical in psych. The little clinical you did get, they were afraid somebody's gonna beat you up in the psych department, so they didn't let you do much at all. And one of the things that, that happens when you look at these psych questions is you figure out rather quickly, oh my God, there's so many psych meds on this test because when you look at medications on any of these tests, HESI, ATI, NCLEX, when you look at all these psych meds on the test, 
typically what we hear and see and, and understand is that the majority of the generic medications on any of these tests is psych. The next component is cardio, period. So you kind of got to know your psych meds and you can't know the meds without knowing the disease. Like you can't know about an SSRI without understanding thoroughly what depression means. And you can't really deal with the antipsychotic and the extra pyramidal symptoms without understanding schizophrenia. Just makes sense, okay? So you need to know that psych is about 10% of your test. Now, I will say this. It's been my experience that the English second language student knows the least about psych in America because in America, we treat the psychiatric situation very different than anywhere else in the world. And so it's a special way of learning a gray area that's not simple black and white, like two plus two is four. Mm, no, it's what do you say to the patient? What don't you say to the patient? This one you can touch, that one you better not. I mean, it's a lot. And so we explain in our program that this is the subject that you need to do first. When I tell you to study subject by subject, you got to start with psych and then guess what? You got to end with psych. Mm -hmm. Go back to it, review it, know it. Okay, the next one is really interesting and that's the basic care and comfort. And you would think something at a lousy 9% would not be that big a deal. Oh yes, the hell it is. Mm -hmm. Now, let me put it in perspective for you. Basic care and comfort was the number one area of failure on the old test before April 1st, 2023 came in. Now it is still one of the highest failure areas, but it's tied with something else on my board. We'll talk. But for right now, let's explain all about basic care and comfort. Basic care and comfort is activities of daily living for the patient, the eating, the hygiene, the, um, the transportation, the laundry, all those ADLs and how to help them best do it. It's assistive devices like canes and crutches and walkers and braces and different things like that. It's also non-pharmacological pain management and assessment as well as some pharmacological pain um, management. So it wouldn't be a good idea to take a patient who says, I have heartburn and give them a PPI. No, then you would have failed the basic care and comfort question. What should have been done instead of giving them an antacid or PPI or whatever, what should have been done is a lot of teaching. What kind of teaching? Well, don't eat within three hours of going to sleep. Don't wear tight fitted clothing. Avoid spicy fried foods, you know, teaching diets yeah so positions and diets are a big deal even the patient's elimination pattern so the patient says i'm constipated if you reached for a stool softener you just failed that part of the exam because you should have been saying let's push some fluids let's get you on a high fiber diet and let's move around more especially after meals and you know you'll find that you are not as constipated so again basic care and comfort okay big area of failure all right next on the list is a troublemaker it's pharmacology you know what pharmacology is. I don't need to stand up here and tell you what that is, but I do need to remind you that it's all generics and it's not just actual medications, it's medication administration. So you do have to know your syringes. You do have to know your angiocath gauges. You do have to know is that particular medication given IM or sub Q. Am I supposed to even give that one IV? Oh, should I crush it 
or not? Can it go down an NG or not? You have to know all of those things, not just generic meds. Now, one thing you don't have to really go crazy with, you don't have to go crazy with math. I read in the test plan and one of the instructors asked me, how do you know that? Well, I read in the test plan that a math mathematics calculation in the and on the NCLEX exam cannot make you pass nor can it make you fail. In other words, they do not put that much weight into a mathematical calculation. And so they should have never told me that because your girl over here is like, oh, for real? Oh, really? So math can't make you or break you or fail you or pass you? Well, then sounds like that we need to put a zero on all math questions because frankly, there's an average of one per every hundred students. Most people get zero and you spent all that anxiety these schools spent all this wasted energy time and effort scaring the shit out of you making you get that 95 percent on your math test when they should have been focusing more on procedures you'll see what i mean now the next category is the one that i want to talk about and make sure you understand because when we talk about the next category which is your procedures. It's not gonna be called procedures on the exam. It's going to be called reduction of risk. I put procedures on it because I know that this is a big, broad, crazy, outrageous, ridiculous category on the test. And I wanted to make sure students were very clear on what they should be studying. Now, again, you don't need to buy the pink packets. They're definitely the bomb.com. But if you don't have that kind of money, you can go ahead and go on to the playlist and pull up the reduction of risk. And also there's a playlist that just says procedure. So either way you go, you're gonna get about 20 videos on this stuff in this packet. And this packet, this reduction of risk being tied with your basic care and comfort for failure area on this new test, it's really been interesting because it wasn't number one on the old test. It definitely is tied for number one on the new test. And it's important because it's 15%. By the way, pharmacology is 15% plus, usually more 16, 17%. But this reduction of risk is 15%. And when you look in here, this particular packet is organized by body systems. So we start off with the number one procedure on the entire test the blood administration, and I just have that handout in there. But practically speaking, this is just a really great outline. So it has all the blood administration in here. And then you turn around and you got some tips about anemia because that goes with it. And then if you look at each page, you start off with your IV access, your central lines, your types of IV fluids, and then you turn the page and you go into respiratory procedures, including anesthesia and analgesia during post-op, during operative procedures. We talk about trach suctioning and oxygen administration and chest physiotherapy and how to do an MDI and um, you know, your incentive spirometry, suck the balls, that'll hit you later. Mm. We talk about purse-lip breathing. We go into detail about your ABGs and we talk about your pulse oxes. And we go into detail about GI procedures, your nasal gastric tube, your Salem sump, your, your enteral feedings, your pegs, your medication administration through the peg tube or NG. So that's a big one, you know that already. And then we go into detail about ostomies, colostomies, ileostomies, what's the difference? We talk about enemas and stool for guaiac. We cover your oscopy procedures, your endoscopy, your ERCP, your 
MRCP, I mean, just everything. And then we make sure that we talk about amniocentesis, paracentesis, thoracentesis. Then we go to our genital urinary procedures, which is gonna be your catheters, your ileoconduit, your dialysis, cystoscopies, IVP, 24-hour urines. We look at medication administration and make sure that you know that a lot of medications go off the BMI in terms of injections and intradermal, IM, subcutaneous, IV meds. You better be pushing those slow. Peaks and trough. We talk about transdermals, creams, rings, and things, huh? So we talk about all of that. I mean, Nufa ring is even in here, the contraceptive ring. We even have Emla cream. We have all kinds of fun stuff. You have so much in here that's gonna, gonna help you. Eye drops, your ear drops, your drainage systems, your Jackson Pratt's, your Hemovax, your canes, your crutches, all of your ortho, musculoskeletal or ortho procedures, your sequential Ted hose, all of this good stuff, canes, walkers, you name it. And we have everything from this particular test plan item. We have everything you could ever need. All your neuro procedures and your, your ventilators. We have your cardiac procedures, EEG, EMG, TEE, EK, I mean, just everything, okay? So Glasgow scale is in here. Oh, just in case you forgot, you got to know EKGs. And then, you know, we're talking angiograms, cardiac caps, arteriograms, stress tests, your MUGA scans, your LBADs, your VQ scans. And if any of this is sounding foreign to you, I'm going to need you to know you need to know that stuff, okay? I know it's not really fair that you have to know lumbar puncture and Glasgow scale and EMG and the Snellen eye chart and tonometry pressures and myelograms and, you know, it's not fun, but I do have everything you need, okay? Now, so that's why this is tricky because if you notice, I spent a lot of time with all those procedures because there's over 500 procedures and you gotta know, is the patient NPO or not? What position do you put them in for this procedure? What preparation is needed ahead of time? Okay, I mean, you just gotta know it. And then you see that physiologic adaptation is one of the last big items on the NG and NCLEX test plan. And when it comes to physiologic adaptation, we're talking side effects, signs and symptoms, complications, risk factors of any disease process or meds used to treat it. Kind of crazy. Now, you know as well as I do that on this test that will last a maximum of five hours, that will give you a minimum of 85 questions to a max of 150, you know that if you get 85 questions, you've had a minimum of three unfolding case studies. And these three case studies in 85 questions called unfolding, that's just a minimum. Sometimes you guys get confused. I said three, but I said that's the minimum. You could have six, five, eight, whatever. The minimum, though, is three. And don't forget those pilot questions. They could throw out a case study, okay? So these unfolding case studies go by your clinical judgment. Ugh. Okay, you're tired of that. I know you are. You're tired of hearing that phrase, but stay with your girl. This clinical judgment, recognize cues, analyze cues, prioritize hypothesis, generate solutions, take action, and evaluate outcomes is a bunch of gobbledygook until you put it together with Gray's Anatomy. So, of course, we have like all these wonderful case studies based on Gray's Anatomy that helps you learn what is a case study and how to answer it. And I'll tell you something. I got to be honest with you. I don't want you to study too much of this because you guys know how to answer this. What you don't know is the rest of this. Do not, did you hear me? I said with this NGN, NCSBN test plan, do not overstudy for case studies. You don't need to because you're doing well 
collectively as a country full of nurses, you're doing quite well on the case studies. You suck at all the rest of this stuff. Your focus should be all the rest of this stuff, not case studies. But for the person who really needs help with the case studies, and that's, you know who you are, you have no idea what to do with the case study. I already have those in the actual HETV playlist. It's under case studies, imagine. But also it's kind of fun because it's based on Grey's Anatomy, which makes all the sense in the world. Now, I want to wrap this up by saying, as you plan to study for the NGN test plan, remember we have lots of tools for you. We have the eight for 88 pink packets. We have that famous, oh my God, that takes every single one of these and gives you a quickie in it. Uh, we have your pharmacology that gives you the top meds in 2024 that you should expect to be on any test. We have the medication categories packet where you can go and look at every category and the endings of these categories. We have the EKG packet. We have the management of care. We also have self-study where you get all 50 packets, uh, every single subject, GI, neuro, cancer, uh, what is it, pediatrics, maternity, ortho, geriatric, psych, respiratory, renal, acid base, burns, hematology, respiratory procedures, GI procedures. You also get endocrine and diabetes and, and immunology and infectious disease. And you just get so many packets all of those are emailed to you if you do self-study. You also have the best cream of the crop, which is coming here to Cleveland with me. And I'm really excited today. I've been very productive on this hot girl summer day. Mm -hmm. I negotiated a contract with a nearby hotel to offer very affordable lodging and housing for you if you choose to come from wherever you are and take advantage of the boot camp. Boot camps are three days with me teaching you everything you need to know. And it is two different dates so far. We'll add a third later, but for now, there's a boot camp three day course in July. There's another one in September. And it's $399 for the three days, 8.30 to 4.30. And we review the entire test plan, give you the nuts and, and bolts and the meat and potatoes of what you got to know. At this particular boot camp, you always get eight pink packets, five case studies, and we always are going to give you the brand new, it just, just happened, 2024 top meds on any test you might take. And then again, you got to know, I'm so excited about the fact that you can stay literally eight minutes away from the school here in this class, eight minutes away and come here and learn everything you need to know. I did that because I was pleasantly surprised that everybody across the country came to hear and learn and be in this room and do the boot camp. I could not believe that we had representation from Georgia, Florida, California, Washington, Utah, New York, Virginia, Michigan, and North Carolina and Pennsylvania. And 10 days after our boot camp that we had in May, 10 days later, this beautiful young lady from Utah passed her test, called me and let the whole class hear about it. So deuces, I'm done. I hope I helped you. Here's the deal. You've got 48 hours to get $100 off of a boot camp. You just need to text 216-410-0936 and you just need to text 48 hours to that number and I will give you $100 off. The deadline is Juneteenth and so at that point it's back up to $399 instead of the $299 that you could get for the next 48 hours. God bless you. Deuces and peace out.